Welcome to question three from the fall 19 exam two for stats 250. Question three deals with gathering a random sample of younger Americans, group one, and another random sample of older Americans, group two. We are told in the setup that there are more younger Americans as compared to the older Americans within each sample, but both sample sizes were sufficiently large. Each sampled individual was asked, will you or your family be having your Thanksgiving meal at a traditional dinner time, yes or no? And we would like to evaluate if there is a significant difference in these rates, depending upon what population you're from. And the following results were obtained. So they gave us the sample proportion for group one, 0.4516. They gave us the sample proportion for group two, 0 0.6042. They gave us the standard error as well as the test statistic. And so we're gonna go through and answer each of these questions, starting with question A. Question A says, provide an estimate for the difference in population proportions of younger Americans versus older Americans who plan on having their Thanksgiving meal at a traditional dinner time. They want the notation and the value. So we read and we see that they want the difference in the population proportion. So that might look something like this, P1 minus P2. Of course, it wants a value and this value as written is really unknown. So they want you to estimate this value. And remember an estimate of a parameter is really just asking for the statistic. So I better put a hat over each of these P1 and P2s because I really want the statistic from the sample. So I'm looking the sample proportion in group one, which is 0 0.4516 minus the sample proportion of group two, which is 0 0.6042. I'll do that in my calculator. And of course, yielding the result of negative 0 0.1526. Common errors here were to, of course, flip-flop A and B, right? We'll talk about B here in a minute. Some people confused A and B. And of course, no hats, but it did need a hat because it was an estimate of a parameter, which is a statistic. And furthermore, we don't know the true difference in these two population proportions. They are unknown to us. So then moving to question B, so let's compare and contrast question A and B. A wanted that estimate of the difference in population proportions. B says, if there is no difference in population rates, so that's essentially saying if the null hypothesis is true that P1 equals P2, which of the following must be the estimate for the, notice they call it here, the common population proportion. So they are looking, and most of us were able to figure this out, they are looking for this idea of that common P hat, which does have a formula on the card, but we didn't know the sample size, so I wasn't actually able to kind of compute it in my calculator. So instead I need to try and eliminate some choices from the setup here. So let's change colors and try and eliminate some choices. So of course, this estimate has to be, well, in between the two sample proportions. So that makes 0.4215 not a valid answer. Don't even look at it. That makes 0.6275 again, not even a valid answer. Don't look at it. It can't be any of those, it has to be in between. So then we have three choices and we're asked to pick which one. This 0.5217 is the midpoint of the interval from 0.4516 to 0.6042, which was the most often selected answer. That would be true if N1 equals N2. The sample sizes are precisely the same from sample one and sample two. Was that the case in our setup here? It was not. Our setup here actually said that there was more sampled from group one than group two. So that tells me we have to actually wait more towards the sample value of 0.4516 as opposed to the 0 0.6042. So I'll lay out all of these choices here for finding common P hat. If N1 equals N2, yes, you should pick the midpoint, the average, if you will, of the two, 0.5279. If the sample size of group one is larger than group two, you should weight it closer point to 0.4516. And then in this third example, 
if the sample of group two was larger. You should weight it closer to that value. So that would be kind of how I would achieve the correct answer here, just kind of evaluating which one of these scenarios do I in fact have in my setup. So the answer is of, for part B is 0.5182 because of that sample size difference, N1 being larger. Then they gave you for part C the test statistic. They said that the test statistic was written above as negative 1.59. Okay, negative 1.59. So I do know that. And I am testing for if there is a significant difference. So I can already think about the alternative hypothesis. P1 does not equal P2. This is going to yield a two-sided, a two-tailed test. So we want a complete sketch. So this is a difference in two population proportions, and we can easily see from the formula card, and I even wrote it over here, Z. It is a Z-test statistic, and Z-test statistics live on the standard normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So there's my mean of zero. The x-axis label should represent that this is a Z value, a Z test statistic, something about Z. And then I will label negative 1.59, which you can see that's this is negative one. So it's probably gonna go about here-ish, not gonna measure, but that makes sense, negative 1.59. Don't forget that we actually have to go and shade both tails, so I've gotta go find positive 1.59, and I've gotta shade its corresponding tail. So that's another place where I can see some common errors for getting to do a two-tailed test. It did just want a significant difference. We didn't have a one-sided greater than, less than, more than, any sort of scenario there. All right, so there's my sketch with my label of the standard normal curve. Got a Z for my axis label, negative 1.59 shaded to the left, also positive 1.59 shaded to the right. My final step is to find the p-value, so I am going to use the z-table. The z-table, I'm going to go look up positive 1.59, because that's all I've got. And when I go on the z-table and I look up positive 1.59, it's, of course, as it says at the top, going to give me the area all the way to the left. And that area is 0 0.9441. Of course, that's not what I want here, so I've got to do a couple of things. If I do 1 minus 0.9441, I will find this tail here. Agreed? The whole area is one, so I will subtract. That gives me 0 0.0559, but that is just this one piece to the right. I also need the left piece, which is of identical size, 0 0.0559. So I've got to add it up, double it, whatever you want to do to kind of think of that. So I will take 0 0.0559 and I will double it since they're identical, yielding a p-value of 0 0.1118. All right. So really think about your picture anytime you're running a, using the z-table to find your area. Really think about what on your picture you're getting and what on your picture you actually want for your final answer. Then I turn to part D. Part D says, the researchers would also like to include a 99% margin of error. Provide that 99% margin of error. So that's what they would like here. And remember, the margin of error, if I think of the formula for a confidence interval, which is P1 hat minus P2 hat, plus or minus, everything to the right of the plus or minus is that margin of error. So that's what I would like to find here just that piece. So what does it say on the formula card that margin of error is? Taking z star times the standard error of p1 hat minus p2 hat, which was given to me above, wasn't it? All I've got to do really is find z star on the z on the t table actually for a 99% confidence level. That will give me a z star of 2.576. And the standard error was printed at the very top in the summary results as 0 0.0947. And that's all I've got to do. Now I've just got to multiply that. That's going to give me an answer of 0 
which is what I'm going to write in the box. So if they just wanted this piece here, they didn't want the whole confidence interval. They didn't just want the standard error, right? They didn't just want the SE. They didn't want the whole confidence interval. They wanted the margin of error, which is everything to the right of the plus minus in my confidence interval formula. You also could have, of course, found the confidence interval at a 99% level and figured out that margin of error. It's the half width of the interval. That also would have been just fine. A little more work, but you still could have gotten the correct answer there. So hopefully that helps you with question three from the Stats 250 Fall 19 Exam 2.